Welcome back. In the previous segment, we discussed the organization of the main program and the classes which are related to the canvas and the graphics. Now we are going to talk about how the circuit is represented inside the computer. So this is done in a class called MathRep. Okay? So it keeps track of the data related to the circuit. So the data consists of the manner in which the components are connected, okay? the conductance values and the current source values or what, what is sometimes uh, referred to as current source strengths. Then the main member function in this is uh, the function solve which solves the circuit built up until then. So let me talk about the representation a bit more precisely and this is discussed in section 23.4 of the book. Okay? So suppose we have an N node circuit, then it will be represented using an N by N matrix and we are going to call this matrix A. In addition to that, we will also have an N by, N by 1 vector B. Okay? So these will keep evolving as our circuit gets built. And then when we want the circuit to be solved, we will perform mathematical operations on this matrix and vector uh, and we will see all of that soon. Okay, so this matrix AI, uh, this matrix A is going to be used to represent the connections and the circuit values uh, in the following manner. So whatever conductance there is between node I and node J, okay, we are going to make an entry of that value in the matrix in the matrix element Aij. Okay, so just to just to make sure that this is understood. Okay, so let us say this is node I, and let us say this is node J in our circuit. And suppose connecting these two, we have we put some conductance C. Okay, so then we want simultaneously in the representation to have a i j equal minus of c. Okay? So this will keep track of what the conductance is and of course it is symmetrical. So we will also have a of j i also minus c. Okay? And it is 0 if no conductance is specified. So if there is, if there is no edge, then this had better be 0 because, because no edge is equivalent to 0 conductance. Conductance is indicative of how much current can flow and if there is no edge, no current can flow and therefore it is natural to say that the conductance is 0. Okay. AII is going to be the sum of the conductances connected to node I. Okay. So let me let me again give an example. So this is some ij, this is some k, this is some l, and let's say this conductance is c, this is some d, this is some e. Okay, then a i i we want to be equal to c plus d plus e. Okay, so so by so so no, note that given the circuit we can figure out what these values are and given these values we can figure out what the circuit is. So to that extent this is a representation of this circuit. Okay? Of course we are not completely done yet, we have not said how voltage sources are represented. Okay? So voltage sources are represented in the following manner. So we not only have this matrix but we also have that vector B. Okay. If you have a current source which uh, uh, say starts, starts off at some vertex W and enters uh, I the, uh, and it has some strength J. Okay. So then B of I should be the sum of all such current values which are forced to enter. Okay? 
So we will see, we'll see this in a minute and of course if there are some currents leaving okay, then that is as good as negative entry. So over here we are subtracting the sum of the strengths leaving I. Okay. All right. So uh, how does this circuit get built incrementally? Well, what happens when a new node is added? Okay. So let me draw a picture over here, a new picture. So here is some circuit that we have created and now we create a new node. Okay. Well, this new node does not have any connections at all. So what do you think will be present in its, in its uh, row and in its column? So if, you, if we add, uh, so, so effectively uh, if we add a new node, we are going to have an extra column and an extra row added. Okay? And since the node is not connected to anything at all, we have to make that initial row and column become 0. Okay? So again let me remind you how did we add a new node? Well suppose this node, this circuit already had nodes 0 through n minus 1. Then when we created a new node, we created a new node n. So this is now going to correspond to increasing the number of rows and the number of columns. Okay? And so the nth row will correspond to the new node and that has to be made 0. Okay? What about b of n? So if you remember or I guess you do not have to remember B of n is supposed to contain the sum of currents and uh, currents leaving and entering through sources. Okay? But right now there are no sources connected. So as a result a 0 gets added to the column vector B. So originally our column vector looked like this. So say B0 sorry B0 through B of n minus 1 and we are going to add a b of n to it and the value for this we are going to make it to be a 0 okay? because there is no current source connected to this. Okay. So now what happens if a conductance C is added between nodes? So let us go back to this picture. Okay? So suppose a conductance C is added then what happens over here? Suppose let us say we are just adding this but if we add this Aij should be minus C. Okay? So as a result we are going to subtract C from Aij. Remember Aij was originally 0. So both of these were originally 0. So we are going to subtract C from them. And we have to, the C has to appear over here. And so to Aii there might have been other entries but we now add C as well. Okay? So that is how adding a conductance gets reflected in our data structure. Okay? And if I add going from node i to node j, okay, so let us say this is node i and this is node j, okay, so I can even draw it over here. So let me do it that way. So suppose I add a current source connect going from i to j over here. Okay. So its strength is j. Well, what should happen? So B of i should have the current sources entering i. Okay, but this is current leaving I. Okay, so as a result I should subtract, uh, subtract J from B of I okay? so which is exactly what I am doing and this J is entering J, the node J and therefore I am adding capital J to B of J. Okay, so this is how exactly that circuit gets built up. Okay, so let us look at our, uh, our code and look at the member functions add node, add source, add conductance. Okay, so these are operations in MathRep. Okay. So add node first. So we have to push back an entire 0 row. Okay. We have to append a new 0 row. So this is what happens. This is what, is, this is what makes that happen. Notice that the vector class makes it very easy to append uh, and append rows since this is a vector of vectors. Okay? So A is a vector of vectors, okay? see over here and therefore this will just append an entire row. Okay? And uh, then uh, we have to add a 0 column. So now what we do is we are just going to look at every row and we are going to append a 0 to it, that is it. So this is a loop over every row of that vector and we are appending a 0. And finally, we want to append uh, a 0 
to our B as well and so that is what this does. Okay. Okay, what about add source? So, if I am adding a source you remember that if a source of value V is added then it uh, going from I to J then value has to be subtracted other and to J the value has to be added. So, this is what happens uh, what we need to do. Okay. And if I want to add a conductance okay, then uh, to I i the value has to be added uh, see this. Okay. And uh, also to JJ because the conductance is connecting to and the treatment is symmetrical and from IJ the value has to be subtracted and also from GI. Okay. So, that is what that is what add conductance does. So, quite simple. Okay. All right. So, let us get back to our presentation. Okay, so, now we will talk about how to solve the circuit. Okay. So, um, solving the circuit first of all uh, requires us to find the voltages at the nodes. Okay. So, we do not know those voltages and let us say we represent the voltage at node i by x of i. Okay. So, x of i is, so x is going to be a vector and i is going to be uh, the ith index uh, in it, the, the value at the i at index i in it. Okay. But right now this is unknown to us. Okay. So, um, uh, now I want to tell you a little bit about how circuits work. Okay. So, let me, let me start on that. So, this is our uh, vertex i and this is our vertex j and let us say that going from here to here there is conductance G i j. Okay. Now, how, okay, so what do we know about the current going from here to here? Okay. So, it turns out that this current from i to j is equal to the conductance of that times the voltage of i, the voltage drop or the voltage at i minus the voltage at j. Okay. So, this is, this is the current going from i to j. Okay. Now, we do not know this. Okay. We, we do not, we only know, well, yeah, so, so everything here is an unknown. So, we do not know the current we do not know the voltages, but what we have done is we have established a relationship between the voltages at these points and the current over here. Okay. So, this is just what is called Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law as you, as you might have perhaps studied in physics. Okay. All right. So, now I can ask what is the total current leaving I? Okay. So, there might be other edges. Okay. So, how do I calculate this? Well, I just take the sum over, let me, let me do it in a different color just to keep, keep track of it. So, I am going to take the sum over all the j, all the, um, all the conductances connected to, connected to i. Okay. So, if I just take the sum, so that gives me the total current leaving. Okay. Now, I can factor this out and that factoring is important. So, let me write it down a little, little bit carefully or I, I guess I can explain it on the screen. Okay. So, what is happening over here? Well, there is this xi term. This xi term is common to all the terms in this series. So, I am going to pull it out and what is the coefficient of the xi term? Well, it is going to be the sum of the conductances okay, g i j. So, that is what I have written over here, some of the conductances leaving i or these g i j's. And then I am left with this remaining term. So, g i j minus x i j and that I have just pulled that minus sign out over here. Okay. All right. So, that is the total current leaving i through the conductances. Now, this if you remember the sum of the conductances leaving i was just a i i. 
okay and therefore this is xi times aii and gij the negative of it is in fact aij so this is what the entire value is okay and in fact this is nothing but the ith component of the product of the matrix a and x okay so we do not know x yet but what we have done is we have established a relationship between the total current leaving i through the conductances and this matrix A and this unknown vector x. So, its ith component of the product is indeed the current leaving i through the conductances. Okay? And this, this must equal, I am sorry I should have said equal over here, this must equal the total current entering i through the conductances. Right? So, so uh, here is my here is my vertex i and i am talking about current leaving through conductances but there is current entering through voltage sources as well okay so uh, what is the current entering through uh, sorry through the current sources as well so what is the current entering through the current sources well the way we define b it is exactly bi okay so what does this tell us this tells us that this must be equal to this. So, the ith component of the product Ax must equal the ith component of B, but this is true for all ith components and therefore, in fact, this entire matrix product must exactly equal B. Okay? So, uh, sorry, this should be so we have to solve Ax equal to B because we, we know that Ax must equal B and now x is the only unknown, this vector of unknowns is there, but we can get that if we solve this matrix equation. So, this is a simultaneous equation which we have to solve. Okay. Now, there is a slight hitch over here. This system has n equations and n unknowns. Remember, n is the number of nodes uh, in, in our circuit. Okay. Unfortunately, okay, these equations are not independent. Okay. But we will get an, uh, a solution if we set any unknown to 0. Okay. So, uh, after we set an unknown to 0, we will get a solution and the details of that I am not going to talk about right now, but they are discussed in this section. Okay. So, that is what we are going to do. We are going to set, uh, we are going to set xn minus 1 to 0 okay. and this will effectively allow us to drop the last column as well. Okay? So, we will get a system which has n minus 1 equations and n minus 1 unknowns and these equations will all be independent that is they will contain distinct information and then we can solve it. Okay? Uh, by the way, if you are, so uh, many of you probably know circuit, uh, uh, know electrical circuits a little bit. and if we have voltages in our electrical circuit, then voltages are all relative. So, I can fix any voltage to be 0 and that is exactly what we are doing over here. Okay? But it relates to equations not being independent and that is discussed in this section. So, please read that. Okay? So, anyway, so I have told you why this product Ax must equal to B and I have told you that we are going to set one of the values xn minus 1 to 0 and then we just have to solve for the remaining unknowns. So, we have a smaller system, well slightly smaller system which we have to solve. Okay, so, now how do we solve this system of equations? So, this is discussed in section 15.2.1 and I am going to discuss it uh, very briefly. Okay. So, uh, so, we are going to solve Ax equal to b and we are only going to look at the first n minus 1 unknowns and first n minus 1 equations. So, in fact, let us forget that we even had that n minus x n minus 1. Okay? So, basically the idea is that we are going to use equation i to eliminate x i from other equations. So, let me just write that down, show that to you. Okay? Okay, so, our equations are a 11 x 1 plus 
a12 x2 plus a13 x3 and so on equal to b1 then a21 x1 plus a22 x2 plus a23 x3 and so on equals b2 and in general a k1 x1 plus a k2 x2 and somewhere here I will get a k k x k and so on equals b k. Okay? Now what this is saying is that I am going to use this equation to eliminate x1 from everyone from every other equation over here. Okay? So how do I do that? Okay? So in general if I have say a i1 x1 plus a i2 x2 and a i i x i equals b i, okay, then this equation is going to be used to eliminate this ith unknown. Okay. So if this is going to eliminate the ith unknown, okay, how do I do it? Well, Okay, so let me let me write down what the equations uh, these equations are. So I'm going to have a11 x1 plus a12 x2 and so on. And say the typical term will be a1i xi and so on equals b1. Okay, then a21 x1 plus a22 x2 and so on and the term over here will be a 2 i x i all the way equals b 2. Okay? And maybe the jth term is going to be the jth equation is going to be something like a j 1 x 1 plus a j 2 x 2 a j i x i equals b j and let us say the ith equation is a i 1 x 1 plus a i 2 x 2 and here I am going to get a i i x i equals b i. Okay, so what our idea over here is saying is that we are going to use this equation to eliminate x i from all these other equations. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, if I want to get rid of this term over here in this jth equation, what do I need to do? I am going to multiply, okay, I am go going to multiply this by a j i upon a i i. Okay? So this entire row is going to be multiplied by a j i upon a i i. So what do I get over here? So over here I will get a j i x i. If I now subtract this resulting row which has a j i x i from this, I will get a 0 over here. Okay? So that is how I have eliminated this. So that is what I am going to do. So I am going to do this for this row, this row, this row and also all the rows underneath it. Okay? And now in this I am going to divide by a i i. Okay? So we in general we need to worry about whether a i i is going to be non-zero. But the way we have defined a i i we will always be guaranteed that it will be non-zero and so we do not have to worry about it. So another way of saying this is that we do not need to pivot in case you in case you have seen this heard this term pivot. Okay? So what does this do? So at the end of it, once we do the elimination, our matrix A is going to look like some non-zero entries over here along the diagonal and everything else is 0 and B has changed suitably but B may have whatever entries over here, zeros and non-zeros, okay? in general non-zeros. 
okay. So, we, are, we have a diagonal matrix. But now if we in fact make this 1, then this will exactly be the solution of Ax, sorry I should have x over here, okay, equal to. So, if this is made 1, then uh, this will exactly be the solution, okay. So, or in other words, if I divide uh, this entry by this entry, I will get the solution for um, xi, okay. So, this is the i throw, okay. So, that is in fact what we are going to do, okay. So, xi is bi upon aii. So, that is what is involved in solving the circuit, okay. So, at this point we will have found xi which are the voltages and so the program can print the voltage at all the nodes, okay. And once we know the voltage, voltages we can also of course find the currents because we already said that they can be, uh, uh, they are related as per this over here. But we are not going to do that, that is just a detail that you can take care of, okay. And you could also say that look I do not want the current printed on uh, or the voltage printed on my uh, on my shell window, but I want it printed uh, in the circuit in, in the canvas itself and that also could be done, but again that is a detail that you can take care of, okay. Alright, so we will take a quick look at this member function solve. Okay, so what does solve do? So I have described it to you already. So we are going to use the i throw okay, to eliminate xi from every j throw. Okay. So, so long as of course i is not equal to j. So it has it is going to calculate this multiplier and then it is just going to subtract that row and that is that subtraction process that is all. Okay. And then finally it is going to print out bi upon aii as the final voltage values. Okay. And remember that the last, so, so we have, we had thrown out one unknown and we had set that to 0. So, that, uh, that was, uh, uh, that had index a of size a dot size minus 1 and that value was 0. So, we are going to print that out as well, okay. So, that is it. So, that is what the solver looks like, okay. So, um, we viewed this already and so what have we discussed? So, we have discussed how circuits are represented as, as a system of equations, okay. And uh, we said that we are going to set 1 unknown to 0 and that gives us independent equations. Then we discussed how the system can be solved, okay. So, we will take a quick break over here and then we will discuss extensions and we will conclude this lecture sequence. Thank you.